In this video, I'll show you how to blur out faces or any other objects and actually track motion in Premiere Pro. Another quick tip as I do this playback, as I have this vlog practice clip on my timeline, to actually loop playback so it's easier to play through this footage, if I set an endpoint on my timeline by typing the letter I on my keyboard, go to the end of where I want to loop it, say I just want five seconds of this or so. And then in my program monitor under my settings down here, we actually have a loop playback option. So if I put that down there on my panel, click that, it's actually going to loop this playback through and then repeat it so that you can just continue to see and edit what you're working on. So that's a quick tip. But on to blurring out faces. This can be done with pretty much any effect or any anything you want to do in terms of tracking an effect to a specific part of the frame. To blur out, you can use a blur effect or a traditional style that you might th think of is more of this mosaic effect that's under stylize. So if I apply that here and then we adjust our settings for the number of vertical and horizontal blocks, you're starting to get that traditional sort of blur out effect you might see. Now, we don't want to blur out the entire footage. What we want to blur out is just my face. So I'm going to go to the very beginning of this clip. And to do that quickly, I can press the up or down button on my keyboard to get to the top or bottom start or end of your clip. Next, I'm going to create a mask. And I can do that with my ellipse square or with my free pen tool, I'm going to just start with my ellipse mask. And now when I do that, you can see that I can move this around and that effect is only being applied to what's inside this ellipse. You could also expand and feather out the edge of this effect here with these settings, which can also be edited here in our effects controls panel. If you need to know about Mask too, you could always invert these things. Kind of a trippy Minecrafty effect. But once we have this here, if we play through this, what's gonna happen? Uh, well, it doesn't really stay to my face. So we have to keyframe it to my face. And luckily there's an automatic way to do this with a mask with these buttons right here. If we click this button, track selected mask forward button, if we click that play button, it's going to analyze this footage and it's going to actually move this effect, this mask with my face. So now if we go to the beginning of the clip, you can see that it's applied all these keyframes. If I zoom in here on this timeline up here in the effect control panel, you can see that there's individual keyframes for every single frame. And as I play through this, this mask is going to move with my face. And if I just scrub through the play the timeline, you can see it actually moving. So that's pretty cool. If there's, for some reason, a place where you want to manually move it, or if this doesn't work perfectly for you, you can manually set keyframes as we've seen before. So say I extended this clip and it hasn't analyzed the rest of this clip that I just extended, but we wanna keep moving this. What we can do is just go forward, we can move this a little bit, and as we move it, it's going to actually move our mask over time because we already had the keyframes over here. So we're telling Premiere Pro that between these two keyframes, we need it to move. You do need that initial keyframe set for it to move or to set a keyframe automatically. You can also go one frame at a time and do it. So if we click that button and go one at a time, you can do that. And that is going to be a long way to do it. Generally, the automatic track select mask forward button will work. If you need to go backwards from where your playhead is, you can do the track select mask backwards button as well. For this wrench icon, you have these tracking options. If the size of your, whatever you're tracking stays relatively the same in your throughout your clip, just using the position or the position and rotation option is a good one. If you have like a, 
a plane that's flying into the distance or a person that's moving closer or further away from the camera and actually getting smaller or larger in the frame, choosing the position scale and rotation option is the best bet. And that's gonna give you the best option anyways. Uh, but for some reason, if your track isn't working, play around with these options uh, before you actually click the track selected max, mask forward button. So that's pretty cool, right? All right, we'll see you in another lesson and I hope this helps you out.